This photo, circa 1940, is of my mother, Edith, and her three sons, John, the eldest, Peter, and Paul, the youngest. The photo was taken in front of the family home at 6826 South Dante Avenue on Chicago's southeast side. Dressed in our Sunday best, we probably had recently returned from attending a Methodist church in Chicago's Woodlawn neighborhood. Not shown in the photo are my father, Hans, and my sister, Anne, not yet born. Both of my brothers are now gone. By the grace of God, I remain, thankful for the blessings of life and for fond memories of bygone days with parents and siblings. This is an old grist mill that has been in my family for many years. It's in the mountains of West Virginia and is surrounded by apple orchards and farms and has a meandering creek that runs in front. This is where our family has gathered for more than 60 years. We have gathered here for celebrations and funerals. We have passed down stories from generation to generation while sitting on the patio or in front of the fire. It's a beautiful, safe place that is full of wonderful memories. It's weird and funny how God just steps into your life when you are least expecting it. Traveling in Africa, our group went to watch the Nanyuki spinners and weavers work. I walked in and experienced a breathtaking epiphany moment. Here was a group of women, babies on the floor and snuggled on their backs, working together. They were singing a hymn in Swahili, and I cried. They were all widows or otherwise single mothers, and here was a place for them to work, care for each other and their children, and pray and sing. Their husbands had all died in accidents or of AIDS. They survive as a community, supporting each other. The earth brought forth the trees. The water transformed them into driftwood. The sky painted the sunset. My friends and I gathered at the shore and assembled branches into whatever you see. At day's end, our campfire returned them to ashes, embers flickering out in the sand. We silently climbed the pitch-black dune, tenebrae of the lake. God is everywhere, revealing himself as he chooses. We didn't plan anything. We simply balanced the wood where it felt right. But on this evening, God, the artist, was with us. We were born a month apart. For our first six years, we spent nearly every day together. She moved when we were 11, then we wrote, called, and saw each other a few times a year, even as she struggled in adolescence and young adulthood. I was calling her the day they found her. I don't think anyone heard the phone ringing. The next day, her father let us know she was gone. A summer day in 1958, all joy and love, and the future ahead of us. She is still my best friend. Hiking in Arizona in Boynton Canyon when I heard a flute playing. You could hear it everywhere you walked, even back at the beginning of the trail. I was on a spiritual journey and practicing being mindful. It was thrilling to be accompanied by the sound. The sound was everywhere. Carl Olson, Private First Class in 1918. He enlisted in the Army and was sent to France. Fortunately, he arrived just months before the end of World War I, November 11th, 1918. His duties were rear guard near the city of Brest, France. My dad was born in 1895 and died in 1960. He witnessed firsthand the marvelous inventions of telephone, electricity, radios, autos, airplanes, and so many aspects of daily living we take for granted. This picture is a link to three centuries of American life for my grandchildren. I am able to tell them family stories told to me by their great-grandfather. Why I go to Haiti, which, second only to my family, is the most meaningful part of my life. I go to serve, but end up being served instead. The joyous smiles on these children's faces radiate love in spite of a life of hardship that we in America can only imagine. Jesus would have me give a cup of cold water in his name, which I gladly do. However, each time I go, I see him in the Haitian people who bear great suffering with dignity and patience. I come home tired and drained, but in an odd way also filled to overflowing. It symbolizes the past, the present, and the future to me. My family and I were sitting at a cafe across from this cathedral in Baie, France, and took this picture. 
We had come through a couple of years of sorrow, sickness, and loss, and were now at a moment of celebration. Seeing the cathedral in the beautiful evening light reminded me of God's presence enduring through all time and all places, giving me a sense of peace and hope. This picture was taken the day Julie was released from the University of Wisconsin Hospital Transplant Center following her liver transplant. It represents a triumphant day for Julie, who required a liver transplant due to a rare autoimmune disease she had for more than 30 years. In addition to liver disease, Julie has had to overcome several major illnesses. Through everlasting faithfulness, both Julie and I have witnessed God's healing power in answer to prayer. The testimony of healing in answer to prayer is an experience known by the entire family. For 20 years, we spent a month on Sanibel Island. At first, it was merely to escape some of the long winter at home. As the years went on, we looked forward to the time to experience a totally different lifestyle, even for a short time. Sanibel became our Sabbath, a time set apart, a time of reflection, more time to read, to be quiet and enjoy walks on the beach, watch sunsets. Experiencing God's creation in that setting definitely refreshes our spirit. Wailing Wall in Jerusalem on a tour with First Presbyterian Church. Divorced on Friday afternoon, the following Monday night, I stood in Jerusalem, trying to figure out what God had in store for me. In Galilee, our group sat on a hillside and read from Matthew's Gospel. Chapter 5, verse 31, greatly distressed me. What am I to do, I asked. God's grace is sufficient for all who come to Christ. This is a photo of a napkin my daughter drew on during a visit, Christmas 1982. After we moved to Virginia, my first wife was very unhappy and returned to Illinois with our two kids. She brought Rachel and Derek to Virginia to visit me at Christmas. After their visit, I decided I would not spend another Christmas away from them and moved back to Illinois. I probably would not be with my wife Sherry and son Kevin if I hadn't returned to Illinois. I have a good relationship with Rachel and Derek because I made the choice to be part of their lives. My boys fill my life with love and laughter. I am forever grateful that God gave me this gift of two genuine, caring, and fun boys that are comfortable in their own skin. As a single parent, it has not always been easy, but we have all grown stronger together and learned many life lessons that will shape the men they become. They show compassion and empathy to people that touch their lives, and I am happy that God has a place in their lives. What a gift I have been given. The joy I received since beginning to paint. Because of health concerns, I gave up an activity that I had thoroughly enjoyed for years. A door closed, opened another. God's guidance that led me to try painting to see the world with different eyes, appreciating nature, color, and light. Until we see each other again, and again, and again. Lightning struck when I first saw her. God smiled on me when I met her. One and only loves this day. Our relationship became long distance. Made a conscious decision to freeze time. Our wedding in 21 months became our great advent. Longing for handwritten love letters, her voice in the paper, while gazing at her face in this picture.